On May 27, 2016, Ms. Heard walked into a courthouse in Los Angeles, California to get a no-notice ex-party restraining order against Mr. Depp, and in doing so, ruined his life by falsely telling the world that she was a survivor of domestic abuse at the hands of Mr. Depp. Today, on May 27, 2022, exactly six years later, we ask you to give Mr. Depp his life back by telling the world that Mr. Depp is not the abuser Ms. Hurd said he is, and hold Ms. Hurd accountable for her lies. Now it's time for you, the jury, to come to a decision. You have been entrusted with a serious task. What is at stake in this trial is a man's good name. Even more than that, what is at stake at this trial is a man's life. The life that he lost when he was accused of a heinous crime and the life he could live when he is finally vindicated. Exactly six years ago today, on May 27, 2016, Ms. Heard walked into court and filed a false report of domestic abuse against her husband of 15 months, Johnny Depp. The scene was a setup. She tipped off the paparazzi so they would be waiting. They knew exactly where she would pause, which side of her face to photograph. And the photos captured what she wanted them to see, the image of a battered woman. What the paparazzi did not know is that the dark mark on her face mysteriously appeared six days after last seeing Mr. Depp. It was a lie. She knew it. Mr. Depp knew it. And the multiple witnesses you heard from who saw her that week of May 21st, 2016, also knew it. But the world only saw what she wanted them to see. Two years later, when promoting the biggest role of her career until this trial, Ms. Heard presented herself to the world as a public figure representing domestic abuse. The headline of the op-ed featured the term sexual violence, even though she had never before accused her ex-husband of such a heinous crime. Ms. Heard and her lawyers love to remind you of how the op-ed did not mention Mr. Depp by name. But Ms. Heard made sure that there would be no mistake about who she was referring to. She inserted, two years ago, so the world would remember the photo of a battered woman, the mark on her face standing outside the courthouse. And they would once again see Mr. Depp as the villain, this time in full swing of the Me Too movement. But what was happening behind closed doors was quite different from what Ms. Heard presented to the world. The exact opposite, in fact. There is, a, there is an abuser in this courtroom, but it is not Mr. Depp. And there is a victim of domestic abuse in this courtroom, but it is not Ms. Heard. The evidence presented at this trial has shown that Ms. Heard is in fact the abuser and Mr. Depp the abused. As you heard from Mr. Depp and multiple other witnesses that testified under oath at this trial, Mr. Depp experienced persistent verbal, physical, and emotional abuse by Ms. Heard during their relationship. You heard from Mr. Depp about how often Ms. Heard would berate him, insult him, and physically attack him, including one of the most serious occasions when Ms. Heard threw a vodka bottle at Mr. Depp, severely injuring his finger, and then put a cigarette out on his face. You heard from Mr. Depp that this whole incident in Australia started because Ms. Heard was enraged that Mr. Depp wanted a post-nuptial agreement and she wasn't in his will just a month after getting married. You also heard from Tara Roberts, a manager at Mr. Depp's Island, who witnessed Ms. Heard telling Mr. Depp that he was washed up and would die fat and lonely. You also heard from Ms. Roberts that she witnessed Ms. Heard clawing and grabbing at Mr. Depp, grabbing his hair, trying to pull him back to her, and Mr. Depp had a visible injury to his nose on that occasion. Most importantly, you heard from Ms. Heard yourselves on multiple audio recordings, admitting to being physically violent with Mr. Depp. What you didn't hear on a single recording you heard in this case, and there were many played by both parties, is Mr. Depp ever admitting to hitting, punching, or kicking Ms. Heard. You didn't hear it. It doesn't exist. It didn't happen. 
And despite the fact that Mr. Duff and Ms. Hurd are heard discussing many of the alleged incidents you've heard about at this trial, like Australia and the Bahamas, you never heard Ms. Hurd accuse Mr. Depp of sexual assault. Unlike Mr. Depp, who you heard admit to and own up to his past mistakes and his struggles, particularly with drugs and alcohol, Ms. Hurd will not admit that she, has never that she has ever done anything wrong. But she cannot deny what you heard on those recordings. As much as Ms. Hurd and her lawyers have tried to make this case about Mr. Depp's language, it is Ms. Hurd that repeatedly admits to violence. When you catch Ms. Hurd in a lie, she tries to cover it up with more lies. So let's talk about the giant lie at the heart of this case. Ms. Hurd's claim that Mr. Depp is an abusive monster and that she is a public figure representing domestic abuse. She spun a story of shocking, overwhelming, brutal abuse. She came into this courtroom prepared to give the performance of her life, and she gave it. Ms. Hurd Ms. Hurd's acting coach, Christina Sexton, testified that Ms. Hurd has difficulty crying when she is acting. You saw it. Ms. Hurd sobbing without tears, while spinning elaborate, exaggerated, fantastical accounts of abuse and everything going on in her mind almost a decade prior while enduring that abuse. It was a performance. What we have is a mountain of unproven allegations that are wild, over the top, and implausible. And you can't pick and choose which of these wild allegations to believe and which ones to disregard. You either believe all of it or none of it. Either Mr. Depp sexually assaulted Ms. Heard with a bottle in Australia, or Ms. Heard got up on that stand in front of all of you and made up that horrific tale of abuse. Either she's a victim of truly horrific abuse, or she is a woman who is willing to say absolutely anything. But this case doesn't come down to whether you believe Ms. Heard or you believe Mr. Depp. This case comes down to whether you believe Ms. Heard or you believe Mr. Depp, Christy Dombrowski, Sean Bett, Malcolm Connolly, Travis McGivern, Starling Jenkins, Keenan Wyatt, Dr. Kipper, nurses Debbie Lloyd and Aaron Filotti, Tara Roberts, Ben King, Kate James, Kate Moss, Dr. Colbert, Morgan Knight, Morgan Tremaine, officers Melissa Sines, officers Tyler Haddon, officer William Gatlin, and Beverly Leonard. What Ms. Hurd testified to in this courtroom is the story of far too many women. But the overwhelming evidence and weight of that evidence shows that it's not her story. It's not Ms. Hurd's story. It was an act of profound cruelty, not just to Mr. Depp, but to true survivors of domestic abuse. For Ms. Hurd to hold herself out as a public figure representing domestic abuse. It was false, it was defamatory, and it caused irreparable harm. And to talk more about that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague and my friend, Mr. Chu. As Ms. Vasquez said, you have now come to know the real Amber Hurd. Scary. We also told you at the start of this trial that you were going to come to know the real Johnny Depp, not the many characters you've seen him play so wonderfully in the movies, but the man himself. We kept that promise. You've met the real Johnny Depp. Before Amber Heard, ladies and gentlemen, no woman ever, no woman ever before Amber Heard ever claimed that Mr. Depp raised a hand to her in his 58 years. And no other woman since Ms. Heard made that false claim back on May 17th, May 27th, 2016, has, and repeated it in her December 2018 op-ed. Has any woman come forward since? This is Me Too without any Me Too. To the contrary, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Kate Moss two days ago testify 
This is a woman who has never testified in any proceeding, ever, a very private person, testified that Mr. Depp never abused her and that Ms. Heard lied to you. And she lied to you twice. Beyond the personal and emotional effects of Ms. Heard's lies, their impact on Mr. Depp and his family, the damage she inflicted on his reputation and career is un undeniable. There's an old saying that a good reputation takes a lifetime to build, but only a second to destroy. Mr. Depp spent, in fact, a lifetime building his reputation as one of the greatest actors and movie stars of his generation, an iconic figure respected through, and liked throughout Hollywood and recognized and admired throughout the world. As you heard in this case, Amber Heard is not a true victim. And Mr. Depp certainly is not an abuser. Again, nobody has come out of the woodwork to say, me too. This is the unique and singular me too case where there's not a single me too. While Mr. Depp's name will be forever tarnished by these horrendous and false allegations, this case is about telling you his story and the truth about what really happened, which you've now heard. It is about restoring his lost reputation. It's about showing Mr. Depp's children, Lily Rose and Jack, that the truth is worth fighting for. It is. And it's about restoring Mr. Depp's name and standing in the community to the fullest extent that you can. And you can do something. And only you, ladies and gentlemen, can do that for him. You heard from Mr. Depp yesterday that he has been carrying these outlandish, outrageous stories on his back, pretty stoically, and living them with them for six years and waiting to be able to bring his truth out. And he has told you the truth, the unvarnished truth, even truth that's pretty embarrassing. He knew that was going to happen when he brought this case. You've seen the evidence in this case over six long weeks, which we again thank you for. That evidence shows overwhelmingly that Ms. Hurd's attempt to paint herself as a heroic survivor, an innocent survivor, and Mr. Depp as a terrifying abuser are utterly false. We ask you to please return your verdict for Mr. Depp. We ask you, we implore you to give him his name, his reputation, and his career back. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.